Hello friends, welcome to Abacus Acumen for Quick and Sound Learning. In today's session, we are going to discuss on a thermomechanical simulation in Abacus Standard. And uh, right now on my screen, what you see is a old days uh, thermal switch. So there is a, a brass rod. So where actually temperature from room temperature go to 720 and then then it pushes a switch here, which is a steel plate. So uh, let's get started uh, on this topic. Uh, the topic is thermomechanical analysis in Abaca standard. Now, if you see some of the real time example of uh, uh, thermal expansion, uh, take an example of Eiffel Tower which get taller 15 centimeter in summer due to thermal expansion. So any metal when get heated, it expand and uh, when the temperature goes down, it contract. So uh, Eiffel Tower case in case of summer because it is getting heated. So the thermal expansion because of thermal expansion, its height is increasing. And then you see a lot of this road bridge where expansion joint is created. Uh, and uh, this particular joint uh, you see because of heat the, if there is expansion you see this type of joint also uh, railway sometime you see the the track get bent because of thermal expansion and also there are uh, people are using a thermal expansion in their advantage where th people are having a thermostat in a heater water heater or refrigerator where they use a bimetallic strip steel and copper or brass and because the the two different material having different thermal expansion so uh, the the strip get bent by metallic strip so when temperature is on higher side it get uh, bent into downward side so it reduce the contact so you see a lot, lot of application around uh, thermal expansion which people are using in their advantage uh, typically to get into what is a thermal stress and thermal strain so if you have a block so this is a channel we have a block of uh, L0 length and as a because of it's from room temperature if you hit to say 100 degrees Celsius so room temperature is say 20 and the the, uh, the heated temperature is 100 so there is a temperature difference of 80 into every material have a thermal expansion coefficient coefficient of linear thermal expansion which is a uh, length by length into per degree Celsius or Kelvin so multiply by that it will get that much strain in the part. So alpha delta T is a strain generated because change in the temperature from whatever example I given is from room temperature it get to go to 100 C. Uh, also the stresses if you constrain the, uh, the constrain this bar if it is the bar is not constrained it is a free then there is no thermal strain generated. So bar is free to move in case if you hold the bar at some location the stress will generate inside the bar and the stress is like alpha delta t is a strain so you multiply by the the modulus uh, young's modulus of the the meta the uh, material so e alpha delta t is actually thermal stress generated so it's very straightforward alpha delta t is a strain e alpha delta t is a uh, is a stress uh, thermal stress generated in the part and the alpha is a thermal expansion coefficient of linear thermal expansion now, uh, as I mentioned, people are use uh, thermal expansion in their advantage and then you see a by bi metallic strip. I give an example, two material, different material use steel, copper or brass. They are braced together or riveted or welded. And because of uh, different coefficient of thermal expansion uh, between brass and strip, so strip get bent upward or downward and then, then you switch on or the switch of the case. Uh, so typically I just put uh, you if you do googling for uh, coefficient of linear thermal expansion you'll get it so something like aluminium it have 22.2 10 power minus 6 meter per meter per degree Kelvin so it is a length by length so you, you can have millimeter to millimeter and Kelvin and uh, the conversion from Kelvin to degree is the same so there is no change in terms of uh, uh, Kelvin to degree Celsius, but in case of Fahrenheit, then there is a change. So these are typical uh, coefficient of linear thermal expansion you see for different material. Now, why this topic is so important? Because this topic is mainly very important for the electronic industry challenges. So you have different material use um, uh, 
uh, have a adhesive, adhesive joint between them or soldering done between them and the heat management is a big issue in the electronic industry so because of heat generated there is a heat transfer there is a change in temperature so part get expand so having a joints between two dissimilar material for electronic industry it's become very challenging and this is the topic to understand a uh, quite a bit depth to design a joints like adhesive or the soldering joints between the two dissimilar material the typical problem we are going to do is uh, we are going to have a brass section 10 mm by 10 mm and 300 mm in length and then we'll have a coefficient of thermal expansion like a uh, 20 e power minus 6 this is a brass coefficient of thermal expansion the modulus is 100 gp poisson ratio 0.3 and this particular 300 mm rod is in mid size furnace this is actually a old days people use this furnace switch so they have a brass rod inside the furnace where actually temperature go to 700 800 degree celsius so they want to switch off the the furnace when uh, temperature is to 700 degree c so this particular uh, the the brass bar will be inside the furnace so its temperature from room temperature go to uh, 700 degree celsius 720 degree celsius and because of thermal expansion it will hold uh, it will be fixed at the one end so there is end caster condition this expand then this uh, trigger this switch mechanism so there is a steel uh, strip is there 10 mm by 0.5 mm 2 mm and 100 mm length there is a gap of 0.1 mm between this and then poisson ratio 0.3 so this is what we are going to simulate this and uh, today's furnace this switch is not going to use because a lot of um, high temperature electronic sensor are there so uh, people use lot of uh, latest uh, technology but our motivation is to really build a problem around the Uh, some application and then you can simulate it again just doing a thermal expansion then is is not a big challenging but if you have something contact and simulating something like a thermal switch it will be a challenging and good to understand so guys let's uh, start here so i'll say i have this abaca ca 6.113 so let's start with a new model i'll just set a working directory here so i'll set a working directory so i am going to i already created a thermal switch so i set a thermal switch so for this problem i'll just quickly take you how we are going to proceed so we'll just create a part creation we'll give a metal property we'll create a section property we'll create a instant mesh contact definition temperature condition boundary condition step creation job check and then post processing so first we'll create a part so this will be a brass part so i say brass 3d it will be 3d deformable solid and we'll do a extrusion so approximate size is i put 200 i'll just create one at center 0 comma 0 so this is center then i'll just quickly select this rectangular thing and i can create a square here so i created that then i'll just put dimension here So it's a 10 millimeter. So this is a 10 millimeter. So solid extrusion. It will be 300 millimeter part. So this is a part created. Now we'll quickly create a material. So again brass. Mechanical property elastic. Then I'll just uh, put here. 100 e power 03 0.33 and then i'll just create one more thermal expansion so reference temperature will be room temperature 20 i'll use uh, 20 and then 20 e power minus 6 mm per mm degree celsius this is a thermal expansion now guys Uh, ideally you should have a thermal expansion for different temperature thermal thermal expansion so that way you can uh, build more accurate model but uh, this is just learning phase build up video we are just doing one so that we have put so that's it we put, created a model now brass if you see edited you see a modulus here given and then then we are given expansion now i'll quickly create a section a brass section solid homogeneous 
continue and then I'll say brass I'll just assign this to specific to a section assignment to brass so brass so as soon as I, uh, I assign the section the color is changed so we created the brass part now I'll quickly create steel part steel strip so it will be 3d deformable it will be a shell so uh, we are going to do a extrusion here so I say 300 so I'll create 0 comma 0 again so I'll create this one line and then one more line here and I'll just give a dimension here so this dimension is like 30 and then bottom dimension I'll just give 70 now guys I just, there is a purpose I created the two lines just to for a selection of surface for contact region that's the reason I created otherwise you can have one line or you can cut it there are different ways you can do it and I'll say 10 millimeter depth so this is a section created now steel part it created so I'll create a material for steel And 0 0.3 210 and 0 0.3 now guys for the steel strip which will be outside of the furnace there is no change in temperature so this part doesn't require a uh, coefficient of thermal expansion I'll also created a steel section which will be steel shell homogeneous and the thickness value we are going to give a 0.5 millimeter material will be steel so we have created the section also for this now I will quickly assign this section assignment to steel so we selected that and steel so now let me check okay it looks perfect now just going back uh, what we have done we have created part creation material section we have assigned now we will quickly create an instant so we will go to assembly we will create instant so both this ok now guys uh, we need to really position this so right now you see um, they are penetrating so quickly I will uh, rotate this so here is a rotation so I'll select this second point I see it so I selected this vertical y axis and I say 90 degree and then it is rotated so that way I rotated it I'll just quickly translate it so I'll select this point and this point so it is translated so now it is actually perfectly sitting there but ideally we should we should have a gap of uh, 0.1 millimeter there so I'll do additional translation for this done so the first one I'm seeing 0, 0, 0, 0001 and then I do it has to really go to a negative Z so I'm seeing point 0, 0, 0, uh, zero point zero comma zero comma minus 0.1 say okay so now if we see in one particular view So I put in one particular view so you see there is a gap so there is a gap you see there is a point one gap there so just going back we have created an instant also now we will quickly uh, do a couple of things we can create us a, uh, a step so we will create a thermo mechanical and then we'll say static general NL jump on will put time increment uh, time is 1 initial will 0 0.01 and then point uh, 1 e power 0 0.5 is uh, minimum 1 
So just we'll on safer side we have created the step also. Now we'll quickly mesh it. Guys, when you go to mesh, you don't have to do in assembly or do in part. So if you go to assembly and then you start it, it will give error. So put a part. Um, I want to first start brass. Select size for this. I'm saying two. Apply. Two is quite fine, so I'm putting two point five. I'll say apply. Okay, and then quickly mesh it. Then uh, steel, you put this approximate side to a bit finer. So two millimeter I taken. Select. So mesh it. Now now if you see in assembly, we we quickly assemb we we'll quickly mesh the two part. Now uh, next thing is all uh, brass uh, will create a node set because we want to put a uh, temperature boundary condition there. Also we have to generate a surface here. Uh, for uh, it will be node to surface contact the surface uh, the master will be on the brass even though brass stiffness is lower compared to steel the the master will be on the brass because this particular part is going to apply a load on this it is going to get expand so it is going to get in contact with uh, the steel so it's an applicator type of thing so this will be the master so i'll go to again a brass so i come to part brass i'll create a set create first is a brass nodes so i'll create the nodes i'll select all so you put press shift and then then left button so it will select all and then you said done so you have created the set uh, now i to also create a surface but on this end or that end just will quickly check it so if you put in assembly select a left view so okay if i uh, if i select a part in a left view this, this is the area so i selected a part and then then left view so this is the area so i'll just quickly turn it so i'll create a surface surface will be a master is a geometry base because we have geometry you can have mesh base also so i selected that surface it become a master surface for me now i created node set also now similarly for steel also i'll create a set create now the nodes it will be slave nodes again i'll put left then i'll select this so done so i created a set for uh, steel uh, steel node set now we'll quickly go there now uh, we'll first create a friction so i go to interaction property i'll say friction contact we quickly give tangential behavior penalty stiffness point 2 we can give friction so we have created a friction now we'll go to a manager I'll say create contact it will be initial condition not inside the step surface to surface you have to select and then you can convert it so surface you select a master like this so it will highlight there continue this slave it's a nodal region you select this continue and uh, so you see a finite surface to surface you have uh, friction connected there so that's how we are connected now the the contact so if i really turn it on so you can see there is a contact generated here it's so in contact manager you can check so we quickly done a contact now we have to give a boundary condition now this is end caster this is end caster initial temperature and final temperature so i'll just quickly go back to a notepad we have created instant meshing contact definition will give a temperature condition boundary condition and then we'll quickly run it so boundary condition create so bc is one uh, end caster condition so i'm selecting so i'm selecting this region this the the bottom edge and then i say it's end caster i done there 
then I'll say create another BCs which will be on this other face not this it will be BCs on this face done now I'll put an end caster even though there is no rotation then it's okay it will just constrain all translation rotation anyway 3 it will throw out because it's a it's a hex element only 3 degree of rotation so it will just give a warning but it's okay now both boundary condition is created now we'll create a temperature boundary condition temperature boundary condition will be in predefined field t1 and t2 so this is this is actually you, you this cursor is create a predefined field so I created a predefined field so I'll say T1 temperature and then I'll say continue then I'll say here you will select a set brass node set continue and then I'll give initial temperature 20 okay so we are going to apply the initial boundary uh, temperature T2 guys will be not an initial condition it will be inside the step so T1 initial condition will be the ins uh, before the step T2 will be the inside the step so I created a temperature continue brass continue and then you given 720 so you now you created both T1 and T2 now we are also created the step so we are guys done everything so just quickly go back to notepad part creation material property section property instance we have created meshing contact definition temperature boundary condition step creation now we'll create a job so i'll just save the file save as so thermal switch CA file I'll create so I think we are created quickly we'll create a job and check what how it's going so created a job thermal switch so okay then I'll say first we'll do a data check if uh, data check is fine there is no issue then we can just quickly run it so guys uh, data check is successful so you can see data check is completed now we will submit for a run so we have submitted the run now so guys uh, the run is completed so we will quickly check results how the results looks like so now you see how the switch is working so you see there is a brass which is getting thermal expansion and then it is switching on the 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 switch so there is a gap initial gap is there but once uh, it expand it switch on this so you can check different things like uh, you can check a displacement so you can quickly see how the deform shape is here so it is expanding and then 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 switching on also we can mm, quick check uh, the contact pressure again guys contact pressure is important for all these things uh, uh, because uh, your switch on and switch off condition is based on the contact pressure so contact pressure is one of the important thing important parameters so right now there is a contact pressure of 0.1 MPA on the master surface so there are a lot of things you can do guys so our uh, hope uh, this video is helpful to you for understand thermomechanical simulation and how uh, people uh, uh, do this analysis in Abaca standard so this was a quick example building of video so thank you for watching this video uh, don't uh, give your valuable feedback to uh, abacus acumen at the gmail.com so um, and then uh, Guys, this is, this is a non-profit project, so we required a lot of your help to take this project uh, forward. So don't forget to subscribe us or like us, uh, our channel. And then if you have any feedback, send us at the abacusacumen at the gmail.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.